The singing opens the door to a parallel world. The cord that attaches a youngster to an adult prevents the youngster from going astray. It's also a link that unifies the family animal with the ancestors and the spirits of nature. Like all shamans, Tsuyan has a second soul. The day her spirit leaves her body, the back of her tent will be cut open to let her body out. Her remains will be hung on a tree nestled in a house for spirits. Her clothing and her instruments will be placed a little further on, within reach of her immortal soul. Thus, Tsuyan's shaman spirit will continue to watch over her people. At night, the dukkha leave their reindeer in a sheltered enclosure to protect them from the cold, the wind, and from hungry wolves.
Shamans are also healers. Before healing others, they must first heal themselves to prove that they are true shamans. In November, when the reindeer haven't any more milk, it's time to hunt for wild game. Yadam, the master hunter, and his companions must venture into lands haunted by demons. Jugurtai is the most feared of them all. No shaman is capable of pacifying this unpredictable demon. Sometimes he appears to Tsuyan in the form of a young child, but she isn't fooled by this seemingly friendly and harmless figure. She knows Jugurtai's great power. Tsuyan appeases the forces of nature by offering them tea. She sprays the four cardinal points to keep the demons who can spring up anywhere away. The most dangerous direction is the north. The sun never warms it. The cold wind is from the north, and the door which opens onto the black sky of the dead is there as well. Yadam and his companions embark on a long and perilous journey that will take them far away for several weeks. Tsuyan lost one of her sons on a similar expedition.
Tea for the dukkha is a nutritious soup consisting of tea, milk, and butter. It's spiced with rugir, a mixture of mineral salt which the reindeer can't resist. <laughs> It's very cold. The icy north wind lowers the temperature to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Yadam and his men struggle at an altitude of more than 3,000 meters. At the top of the pass, the hunters gather in front of the hovo, a pile of rocks carried one by one and which serves as an offering to the spirit of the mountains. Each man ties a ribbon on the hovo, consisting of tufts of reindeer hair and burnt juniper. The ribbon's knot symbolizes the pact made with the spirit of the mountains, who will allow them to return. 